So Scott, do you think there's a way for us to add natural fruit flavor to all of our recipes? Well today on WTF we're going to cover all of our fruit powders and how you can add them to your recipes. And we're going to show you recipes for a lemon truffle and a banoffee pie that'll knock your socks off. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, the owner of Modernist Pantry. So if this is your first time joining us here on WTF, every week we're going to cover really unique ingredients and techniques to help home cooks and chefs transform food. So if you like what you see today, remember to subscribe, also ring the bell, so mm -hmm. that you can get notified every week when we come out with our new content. And this week, we're going to be covering fruit powders, which is really fun. They're, it's not as crazy as some of our other ingredients, but it's a really fantastic way to add flavor to really any dish. So in this episode, we're going to talk about what fruit powders do, which ones we have, how do you use it, and as always, Scott's going to have some amazing recipes for you to get started. So Scott, why don't we start off with a little bit about um, what is a fruit powder as opposed to like maybe a fruit flavoring that people are used to. So fruit flavoring is generally synthetic. It's, um, if you think to what a banana flavor is, it has this odd flavor that isn't really banana. It's reminiscent of banana, but mm -hmm. it's not. With these flavors, uh, they're drum dried, so that allows for a really uh, bright, kind of robust flavor of natural fruit flavor. Yeah, and for those people who might not be familiar, what exactly is drum drying? So drum drying is there's these two steel drums and they put the puree over this and it creates a, a really quick drying process and also it almost makes like thin sheets of the, uh, the puree into a dry form that can then be powdered and uh, mixed with a few things so they don't clump. Uh, it's very natural and it's a very quick process so you maintain all that natural flavor. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are concerned these days about having things that are minimally processed. Yes. So I would say that this probably qualifies as minimally processed, right? Yeah, it's no different than if you were to make a, fru a fruit puree then put it into a you know dehydrator. Uh, this is just a faster process to get that kind of drying um, of the fruit. Okay, and which flavors do we carry here in our store? So we carry lemon, raspberry, strawberry, pineapple, pear, and banana. Okay, and I know that uh, on, you know, if someone's buying one of our powders, just kind of get this out of the way before we get to all these delicious recipes, they'll see a few other uh, ingredients and additives on the back of the package. And one of the calls that we usually get is, oh, you know, like if, you're, if this is natural, why are there fillers in it? Can you talk a little bit about you know, like what is the role that other ingredients play in, I always say not just maybe these flavors, but just in general. If you see other ingredients on the back of the package, are they fillers? So not fillers, no. Uh, what these ingredients do is they prevent clumping. These are natural fruits that are turned into a powder. Mm -hmm. uh, fruits contain a ton of water. They love water. Uh, so if you take them out of the package within seconds, if it was just a fruit powder, it would start taking on that water, it would clump up, and sometimes it just turns into a brick. These uh, additives keep them, you know, dry and free flowing. So mm -hmm. that's what they're there for. And it's not like it's 99% of this with a touch of fruit flavor. It's fruit flavor, and this is just to help them free flow around so you can work them better into recipes. When you put them in, they hydrate nice and quick uh, instead of just having clumps of, let's say, lemon powder in this truffle. Yeah, and be, you know, you work with all of these different powders. Do you feel like um, the flavors are diluted? You know, are they concentrated? How do you feel about them? I feel these flavors are very natural, um, especially when I add something like we're going to taste today, this truffle. Uh, you can get a ton of lemon flavor into something like chocolate, which you generally can't get that flavor into uh, just by adding a few tablespoons of the product. So you get a lot of flavor and it's very natural flavor. You can taste everything from, you know, a little bit of the pith to the natural acidity that comes from a lemon. And that goes for every single one of these flavors. They taste like the fruit. They don't taste like that sweetened version of the fruit you right. know. They taste like the fruit itself. Yeah, and so if someone's like, all right, this all this sounds very good, but why would I want a fruit powder? What are some of the benefits that this is going to get me? So like anything, when you're adding a, a powder to a recipe, you generally don't want to add any moisture. I just mentioned here with this, if you add some water to this chocolate, it's going to seize. It's going mm -hmm. to crystallize immediately and it's going to be unusable. But if I use the uh, fruit powder, then I can get the flavor in there without having to worry about that seizing. Uh, and also if I wanted to, let's say, when I added the vinegar powder to my pulled pork, mm -hmm. um, 
you could take that out. You could add pineapple powder to it. Mm. I don't have to add any moisture, but I get all that flavor from the either the fruit or the vinegar, whatever it happens to be. And we can actually go back and look at the vinegar episode. It's either in the description below or you go to uh, episode 153. Mm -hmm. and you can see it there. But really, just adding in these flavors, you get all the flavor without a, all that added moisture. Yeah, and I think one of the benefits, you know, especially for myself as a home cook, is when I buy fruit, most of that fruit, like, I hate to say it, goes to waste, right? Uh, yeah. Because it just yeah. sits in the fridge for too long. Um, and one of the things that I personally love about having powders is the ability to just store them pretty much indefinitely. I mean, they don't really go bad. We have best buy dates on them, but they don't expire. You know, it's not like one day, it's they're gonna be yeah. like Yeah, as long as they're, they're, they're sealed. Mm -hmm. I mean, these bags come with a resealable uh, strip on them. Mm -hmm. So you can keep them in a cool, dry place, just like anything, I mean, it's the generic cool dry place, keep it sealed, keep yep. it away from the elements, and you're gonna have it for a, a good period of time. And with these, if you just need, let's say, a little bit of raspberry, a little bit of strawberry, mm -hmm. whatever you're adding to a recipe, instead of going out and purchasing those, you could just have these on hand, add them right in. Yeah, so you're saving time, you're saving kind of a reducing waste. Yes. So all those really wonderful things that people care about. So, um, yeah, well, is there anything else or do you want to jump into? I think jumping into right. the recipes, we can kind of show a little bit more about how we're going to add the fruit powder into something like chocolate. So here I have some ganache. It's just uh, cream and chocolate. There are some other ingredients in this recipe, but we're going to show you just the ability to add in a fruit powder, how simple it is. If okay. I just start whisking, I can add in the fruit powder. You see it's not seizing. If I just keep going, it'll dissipate immediately in there. Any moisture that was from the heavy cream is going to, you know, attached to that fruit powder and within seconds a super smooth chocolate ganache then when I take this ganache and I put it into a container and I let it refrigerate until it's solid we get the nice little balls if you just scoop them out I might need two I might have to do it with my hand yeah just do it with your hand yeah. <laughs> and this so is so this was the Meyer lemon that you added right yes okay. yes so th so the lemon powder so I take these roll them in, in between my hands and I can dip them right into some tempered chocolate. So if I dip them into some tempered chocolate, use a toothpick to roll it around a little bit. And then, now I'm not gonna use my hand for this. <laughs> Get any excess off and directly into some high quality cocoa powder. Mm. I take these, just a little bit of cocoa powder over the top. And within seconds, you have a nice, beautiful Ooh, a chocolate truffle. truffle. Okay. And actually, Janie, if you wanted to, you could eat one right there. Okay, I will eat one done ones. So the lemon flavor is infused mm. into the chocolate. And this is actually taken from an ubuyi recipe where these were lime. Um, but adding the lime juice in, we always found it, it kind of crystallized a little bit. So then yeah. we added the lemon powder and we found that it helped out so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get a ton of lemon flavor in there. And you actually ate one of these yesterday. I'm going to put you on the I spot. I did. I you did. You sent me a message that said <laughs> they are delicious. So it's true. Made us it was feel unsolicited. Good about <laughs> <laughs> so now they are super good. Like because I don't like things that are overly, overly sweet generally. So these are sweet because it's so much chocolate. But at the same time, you really get that acidity and mm -hmm. you really get that brightness. And it's because you can add pretty much as I was say as much lemon flavor as you want, but yeah. a pretty good amount. Yeah, you add, you add a good amount of lemon flavor to it, and then you get that nice punch of acidity, where generally chocolate, mm. especially in America, is just it's sweet, like sweet, 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 sweet. Mm -hmm. But with this, you know, you get that, that little bit of uh, twang from the acidity, and it's really delicious. Um, and then the bitterness from the outside. So you get a, a nice balanced dessert rather than just sugar forward, sugar forward. And speaking of sugar forward, we do kind of have a different dessert here. Okay, what, what else? I see pie. So we made banoffee pie. And banoffee pie is a <laughs> incredibly indulgent dessert. So <laughs> the bottom is a, a toffee that you make or a, a caramel, a sweet condensed milk, sugar, brown sugar, uh, a little bit of molasses, then you hit it with some chocolate. So it mm. makes it a little bit more free flowing and easy to eat in a pie form. Mm -hmm. And then on top, we layer some bananas and then we make a pastry cream. But instead of adding, um, you know, cornstarch to the pastry cream, which cornstarch will then make the pastry cream, you know, clump up and mm -hmm. uh, be really sturdy. We just add the banana powder and that banana powder sucks in some of the moisture. It thickens the pastry cream. It gives a really bright kind of banana flavor. Mm -hmm. And then when you cut the pie, you can see it start to you know, drip over that really great uh, banoffee 
you know, on the bottom. So it's almost like adding a cream to the top, but you don't have to. And then, of course, we put whipped cream on it because whipped cream is delicious. Mm -hmm. And you can find that recipe on the blog, or you can uh, find it in the description below. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you want to try that, Janie, I that's do. kind of the thing. And I know uh, it's a bit early in the day to be eating this much sweets. Just going, yep, straight right, in. So the, tail, the top layer is the one that has the yep, that's the banana, banana powder. powder. Okay. And this one I have not pre-tasted, so tasting it for the first time. And then the bottom we make a, a nice oatmeal cookie so you get a little bit more texture in there. Mm, and so good. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a really amazing recipe. And uh, when you eat, you only need one slice of this, so you can make this for mm -hmm. a Thanksgiving and you'll make sure it goes all the way. Yeah, it's really, really good because you get that banana flavor like right from the very beginning. And it lasts. It, it does. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I got like a piece of banana and that's pretty much it. It's like the whole way through. Oh, it's super good. Yeah. So I'll be eating both of those later. <laughs> Perhaps a little bit later in the day than, than uh, what time it is now, but oh, so good. Definitely get those recipes in the link in the description below and mm -hmm. try it for yourself because they're really good. Or if you're like, hey, maybe I'll make like a raspberry pie or... Yep. Yeah, you can you take know. that recipe, you can just switch out the... Um, the fruit powder, and then you'll have a completely different recipe that you can use on a different, you know, uh, pie or a different filling or whatever you wanted to do. If you wanted to fill some of the donuts that we made, and mm. uh, you know, in our recipe, you could find it in the link below, and um, you could take one of that, you know, that filling, put in whatever one of these flavors, fill those donuts, and yeah, I mean, you can just make any fruit flavored pastry cream, it's pretty great. much. Yeah, yeah, or fruit flavored anything, really. Exactly. Yeah, so there you go. And and I know that mostly here today we've covered um, sweet recipes. And I know you mentioned the pulled pork. Do you think that there are other applications where people might experiment with using the fruit powders in the savory application as well? Yeah, so I, I like sometimes if I'm just making a soup, instead of wanting to put in a you know, squeeze of lemon juice, sometimes I just put some of the lemon powder mm. in because it's so kind of, it's a really concentrated natural flavor that I don't want to you know, add too much moisture to a, a cream soup or something like that. I can just add in a little bit of the lemon powder and you get a nice bright flavor out of it without having to thin out that soup at all. Mm -hmm. And just remember a little does go a long way. So these are 200 gram or like a little less than half a pound packages, but they really will last like a really long time mm -hmm. for, for each application that you want it for. Um, so definitely, if you like these recipes, let us know. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Or if you have like, hey, I just did this with this recipe, let us know. Uh, ping us on social media. Leave some comments. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. And if you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, We'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences.